Occupation? Deputy Sheriff of Salt Lake County. How long? About 14 years. Directing your attention to August 16, 19, 1975. On or about that day, did you have occasion to know one Theodore Robert Bundy? Uh, yes, sir. Did you know him prior to that? No, sir. Did you know at that time, and do you know at this time, what his occupation was at that day? Uh, yes, I did. What was that? He was a law student at the University of Utah. Do you know what his occupation was in 1974? I believe it was a law student also. That's all I have. Bundy? me. Thompson, you say you knew Theodore Robert Bundy on August the 16th, 1975? Around that time I was acquainted with yes sir. Around that time? Yes. On that date? You say I'm sure? not positive on the date. Oh. Can you give me the benefit of your best estimate for when you first? The first conversation that I had with you was August the 21st, outside the Salt Lake County Jail. That I'm positive. You ever met me prior to that? No, sir. That's all. Thank you. May this officer be excused? Yes, sir. I think you feel good. That's all I have on the motion, Judge. You have witnesses on the motion? Yes, Sean. Mr. Harvey would like a couple minutes to confer with you before I take the stand. Right. We'll take a five minute recess. Can you may confer with your counsel as we talk to you. Everybody remain seated in the judges out of the courtroom. We'll be in recess for five minutes. Is that better? Um, Mr. Bundy, the limited purpose of this hearing though, on the motion on the I'm standing. Thank you, I think. Do you see the only way that the testimony will go for the two parties and nothing to put up with that? I do. Would you please state your full name for the record? Do you know Robert Bundy? Directing your attention to the early morning of August 15, 1975, uh, after you'd been stopped by Trooper Hayward, approximately what time of the morning? established that it was really the 16th or did we? That well, date. Judge, this, there's a discrepancy in, in the report. Well, it was either the 15th or the 16th. Is there any question about that? It's not. All right. right. Long as we're not hung with one on one day and one on another, that's the only thing the court was worried about. We're talking about one single incident, either August the 15th or August the 16th. Is that correct, gentlemen? That's correct. All right. Proceed on. About what time? 
It was early in the morning, uh, approximately 2 o'clock. After you had been stopped, did Officer Hayward say anything to you? <clears throat> well, after the stop had occurred, I exited my car, and the officer, Hayward, uh, had left his car and approached me, and the first thing he said to me uh, was, why didn't you get out of your car and run? I, I could have taken your head off, or words to, those effect, words, to, words to that effect. Did he ask you for your driver's license and registration? He did. I think he asked me a number of questions that, which intervened the request to for a driver's license, and I think he asked me uh, after his first comment what I was doing in his neighborhood, and to which I did not initially make a response. And then he asked me for my driver's license, which I got from the inside of my car. Did you produce a driver's license? Yes. Did you produce a registration? Yes. Did Officer Hayward advise you of your rights at that time? No. Could you relate to me the circumstances uh, which took place immediately after you were stopped? After I gave the officer my driver's license, he went back to his vehicle, as I recall, and leaned in and pulled out the microphone that they use for the radios and came back to me and told me to go stand by his car which was approximately 10 feet in back of my car. He told me to wait there, and there was an officer, another state patrolman, who was already on the scene. And he told me to stay with the officer. He told the officer to keep an eye on me. Let me, let me back up a little bit. Was, was Officer Hayward in uniform? Yes, he was. Was he carrying a weapon? Yes, he was. Was the additional officer who had come to the scene was he in uniform? Yes. Is he carrying a weapon? Yes. How many officers arrived at the scene? Well, they they arrived and they left. I'd say that at any one time there were at the most that were on the scene at any one time approximately a half a dozen. Were uh, they all in uniform? All except for Detective Andrak who arrived later, who was in plain clothes. What was the attitude of the officers towards you? Well, I testified as to Sergeant Haywood's initial reaction. After he told me to stand by his car, he proceeded to my car and walking, he began to walk around it, shining his flashlight through the windows and peering in through the windows. The officer that I was standing with next to the patrol car, began asking me questions, asking me what I was doing in the neighborhood, why I was there, at any, so on and so forth. Did any of the officers read you any rights, advise you the right to remain silent at that time? No. Did anybody advise you of the right to have an attorney present if any questions take place? No. Did anybody uh, advise you that you had the right not to talk to us? No. All right, and then, Officer Hayward was looking in the car with a flashlight? Yes. And then what happened next? He walked, or he, I was, as I was standing by the car, watching him and listening to the officer next to me ask me questions. Uh, I watched him walk around the car and shine his flashlight in the car. He. He apparently was focusing on something inside the car for some time, or it seemed like some time. He opened the car door, entered the car, and I couldn't see what he was doing. He came back to me and then repeated his earlier questions about what I was doing in his neighborhood, why I was there, and then as I recall, he went to make another call on his police radio. Did, the, did Officer Hayward or any other officer at the scene ask you for permission to search the car? No. Did you give anyone permission to search the car? No. 
Had you ever been arrested? No. Did anyone tell you that you had a right to refuse to let them search your car? No. Do you remember the words being asked to you whether or not you minded if they looked inside your car? I can't recall a request to search my car and the words whether or not they asked me if they could look at my car is something I don't recall or construed as a request to search my car. Do you remember telling, them, telling any of the officers that they could look at my car? No. At any point during this incident, did anyone uh, read you your Miranda rights or tell you your rights? Yes. At what point was that? After Sergeant Hayward had searched my car and called in another officer, called in other, another officer to come in, and after my car had been thoroughly searched by the other officers, Detective Andrack approached me at that time and informed me that he was going to seize certain items, items from my car and told me that he was going to attempt to get a warrant or a complaint or something of that type of against me for possession of burglary tools. At that point, Sergeant Hayward uh, and or another officer, I'm not sure, searched me for the first time, handcuffed me, put me in his vehicle, read me the rights off a little card he carried on his console, and drove me downtown to the Salt Lake County Jail. It was after the search had taken place? Yes. And after the items had been seen? Yes. <clears throat> 